What up? It's your boy T-Bird and Reaction. Today's from Friday. Uh, and, and we are in Black History Month right now. So, a little thing we'll do for Black History is take a look at the video I happened to come across. Uh, I held back one of the videos and I had it there, so I thought it was a good time to do it. It was um, the top black sportation actors of all time. So, this mm -hmm. time we're going to keep doing more from Black Culture Explained. So, we're going to look into now the top top black sportation movies of all time. And we're going to look at the top five worst ones of all time. So anyway, black sportation but anyway, no, black sportation was a uh sportation films were like films and films that primarily featured uh black actors as well as black actors and actors as well too. It was basically the, it was pretty much the gateway to get into film as well too as um you okay? I got a little man behind me. Hold on a second. I'm um, back. See, I had to make it a little closer. He was running me. Anyway, so black sportation films were like films that put feature most pretty not be black folks, black actors and actresses. Well, two getting their 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 break in Hollywood. Well, two some will go on to be bigger Hollywood stars. As well, two others you know will you know get well known just for that. As well, two. And I mentioned earlier as yeah, so this week uh this week I'm playing homage to Laker Call Weathers. I mentioned in his top ten uh, uh performances that. And it was and it was in it was happening in the top ten. And when the call whether his first film was a black sportation film, as he he played and he portrays a hitman, my name is Yabro on the uh, the movie Friday for Friday Force. It was star Pam Greer, which is based off a was I, I ended up finding out that based off a, a newspaper comic strip though was interesting though. So anyway, and I just got finished doing reaction to uh, Dracula, which was the inspiration for one of the iconic. Uh, black exploitation horror film Blackula was well too, as well as Spleen Reckless Scream. So anyway, without further ado, we want to check out first the top ten black exploitation movies of all time, and then we're gonna take a look at the five worst ones. But anyway, in a different video. But let's get it. Hello, fellow film buffs and pop culture aficionados. Get ready to take a groovy trip down memory lane as we dive into the electrifying world of black exploitation cinema. From the funky soundtracks to the larger than life characters, these films left an inevitable mark on the cinematic landscape of their time. Let's groove our way through this list because these movies aren't just films, they are cultural phenomena. But before we begin, be sure to like this video and if you haven't already, subscribe. The Mac is an amazing black exploitation classic that deserves to be recognized as one of the greatest in its genres yes. despite some negative reviews even though some people may have criticized the mac as trashy flawed and illogical it's interesting to note that it's actually managed to outgross the godfather and a few select locations where and i've got to mention that also black association film a lot of uh a lot of uh icon uh, black association films also became um a iconic to a lot of uh, films, TV shows, and even music as well too, be it with the references as well too, mm -hmm. such as parody films such as I'm Gonna Get You Sucker and um, well, which me, uh, Hollywood Shuffle and what else one um, uh, Black, Black Dynamite was well, a lot of uh, hip hop influence uh influences as well too, like so Camp Low Low and many others um and through with their music well was their music video or even a song. And all uh, you know, uh, Max Julian was part of uh, Nelly's uh, Pimp Juice video as well too. So that's another thing. And on Mar and on Martin, um, the black remember the episode of Black Station Station uh, episode where they was a uh, they was gonna close down a, a um, store a uh, 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 not a store a uh, black film theater as well too. And they had to play a ball and feature some black uh, exploitation uh, film stars such as Pam Greer, uh, Janae Dubois, uh, Rudy Ray Moore, aka Dolomite, um, and Toria Fargo is best known for a lot of m numerous uh, roles as well too. So anyway, let's and I think um, the one of the, and Pretty Tony from the movie The Mac was on there as well too. So yeah, shown the Mac directed by Michael Campus features a talented Max Julian as Goldie. In this film, Goldie takes a different path from his black nationalist brother, played by Roger E. Mosley, and becomes mm -hmm. Oakland's yeah, most yeah, prominent yeah, pimp. Right, Richard Pryor, Juanita Moore, and Dick Anthony Williams are yep. also part That's of Goldie's crew That's of it. criminal friends. 
Number nine, Cotton Comes to Harlem. Mm. Cotton Comes to Harlem, released in 1970, was a film based on Chester Himes' 1965 novel. It is often considered one of the first black exploitation films, although some credit Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song, mm. released the following year with that distinction. Harlem is so, such an important Bob place in African American one, history. Okay. It played a central role during the Great Migration and the Harlem Renaissance during the early 20th century. The director added a touch of glamour to the hard-boiled crime story with balloons, fans, and feathers in his stylish overnight hit. The 1970 neo-noir flick is packed with exciting fights, hilarious moments, and thrilling scenes. And also, a sequel was released in 1972. Number 8, Black Dynamite. Ah! At first glance, it may appear that Wow! Black Dynamite... So that... <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Guess in the last one, maybe that's see Anyway, he always thanks or anything, too. I should have got some more, but anyway... So yeah, wow. They added black black diamond in this world too. So yep, I guess it's still but there you have it. Let's get it. Dynamite is poking fun at the black exploitation genre. However, mm -hmm. it's actually a clever and nostalgic tribute to the entire Indeed, movie. It is. The movie's gimmicks are done with a charming awareness of some of the And filmmaker Scott Sanders clearly showcases his affection for its exaggerated 1970s style. Mm -hmm. Scott Sanders is the talented director who guides the amazing Michael Jai White mm -hmm. in a thrilling role as an ex CIA agent seeking justice. Black Dynamite was filmed in a super cool way. It they was. Shot the it, entire it movie in just 20 days on Super 16 wow. millimeter film in Los Angeles. And get this, they even started filming before they even had a script. Now Whoa. that's true indie filmmaking. Number seven, Dolomite. Dolomite. Dolomite is a super cool black exploitation movie that tells a story of a big city pimp played by the amazing Rudy Ray Moore. More script was actually inspired by an urban legend he heard while working at a Los Angeles record store. Dolomite leads a fantastic life underground, juggling roles as a pimp, comedian, and nightclub owner. However, his journey takes an unexpected turn when he finds himself behind bars. He's been given the opportunity to go incognito and help tackle the city's drug problem. Nice. Number six, Trouble Man. Ivan Dixon skillfully blends black exploitation and film noir in his beloved crime thriller, Trouble Man. Robert Hooks plays the role of Mr. T, but not the one you might be thinking of. He portrays a tough and determined private detective in the vibrant city of Los Angeles. Mr. T is a cool guy strutting down the streets in his sharp suit and trusty gun. He's like a character straight out of a thriller noir detective story, working with both the police and the criminals to get things done. Mr. T, or just T for short, finds himself caught up in a regular old case that ends up being a bit of a tricky situation. Frame for murder, our <laughs> protagonist T Whitfield. relies on his sharp intuition and street smarts to cleverly outsmart both sides of the law. In the world of black exploitation, Trouble Man may not have been universally loved, but it's still fondly remembered as That's a fantastic good. addition to the genre. Using a talented actor like Hooks, instead of amateurs and sports stars, also played a big role in making the movie even better. Number five, Sweet Sweetback's yep. Badass Song. How could anyone forget such a wild title like this? It's no surprise that it became such an iconic symbol of the cinematic and political mm -hmm. movement. Sweet Sweetback's Ooh. Badass Song is a film that beautifully interesting interesting film by the way I, I saw the first time especially the beginning part incorporates black power ideology it was so influential that it became a must watch for new members of the black panther party mm -hmm. melvin van peoples is the awesome person behind this film that many consider to have kick-started the black exploitation genre peoples had the amazing mm -hmm. opportunity to write direct edit fun produce starring <laughs> Folks, you know that's actually Ma Ma Mario because they did they did a remake of they did like a, a a film based off of the, the behind the scenes of the film like like of him making it and market the movie. They Playing were able the to film father. the entire film in just 19 days thanks to a loan from Bill Cosby. It's about a young mm. town boy who finds himself on the run yeah. from corrupt white police officers in 1940s Los Angeles. Despite screening in only initially two theaters, it managed to perform exceptionally well at the okay. box office. 
Number four, Cleopatra Jones. Oh, oh, Starring yeah. the statuesque Tamara Dobson in the mm-hmm. title role, the film depicted a new type of black female presence in mainstream American movies. Dobson was different from the tough heroines of her time, like Pam Greer and mm-hmm. other black exploitation films. Dobson insisted on not making her sexuality a focus and avoided nude scenes in a deliberate effort to separate herself from the hypersexuality of other black heroines of the era. It's also noteworthy for an incredible five minute car chase sequence that rivals others of its time. No digital effects, just real people, real cars, and real stunts. A black woman controls the steering wheel and laughs with confidence on her way to victory. Right. If you haven't seen our video and on... In, as you mentioned in, her, in the top uh, Black Station actors, actors of the video that she is 6'2". How amazing Tamara Dobson was, be sure to check it out here. Number three, Superfly. Superfly. Superfly is a really cool movie that used the neo-noir genre to tell a streetwise and thought-provoking story. It was a film that African-American audiences of the time either loved or hated. While many viewers enjoyed the bold and daring movie, there were a few who expressed concerns about its potential influence on real-life crime. It's worth noting that some drug dealers even claim that Superfly served as inspiration for their actions. Priest, played by Ryan O'Neill, has made a decision to step away from the crime business. However, before bidding it farewell, he's determined to make one last big move, selling 30 kilograms of cocaine for one million and then enjoying a well-deserved retirement. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if it was just that simple? Number two, Foxy Foxy Brown. Brown. Oh yeah. A small town hustler finds himself in a tough spot when he can't repay the $20,000 he owes the mob. In a desperate move, he decides to reveal the identity of an undercover cop who is dating his sister, Foxy Brown. When the gangsters decide to take the life of the cop, Foxy is quick to make the connection and promises to seek justice. In her quest for justice, she adopts the guise of a prostitute and teams up with a group of caring neighborhood vigilantes. Together, they work tirelessly to locate the hitman, their mafia bosses, and even her own brother. Foxy Brown was originally supposed to be a sequel to the hit black exploitation movie, Coffee. I thought so. also star returning actor I thought so. I thought that was like supposed to, they were supposed to intertwine with each other in the way. In the way he spelled coffee, bro. But anyway, I thought they was intertwined because the coffee spells C O F L Y. I thought something connection was supposed to go with that, but just Pam Greer and returning director Jack Hill. But the studio last minute decided they didn't want to do a sequel. If you've already watched all the movies mentioned above and you're still in the mood for more black exploitation films with a cool sense of humor and Motown vibes, here are a few honorable mentions. Okay. Pootie Tang, <laughs> Three the Hard Way. Mm-hmm. Number one, Shaft. Shaft. I knew it. You may have actually heard the theme song The Shaft without even realizing it. Right. The tune captures that groovy 1970s ow, disco ow, ow, sound as Isaac Hayes asks, who's the cool private detective mm-hmm. that's a total charmer to all the ladies? Shaft. The track was so popular it yeah, even won an right. Oscar. Yeah. And even though it may seem to contradict the essence of the black exploitation genre, mm-hmm. it really highlights the exceptional quality mm-hmm. of Shaft. Richard Roundtree stars as the iconic detective John Shaft fearlessly mm-hmm. takes on both mobsters and the crime mm-hmm. in Harlem. He brings this legendary character to life in five thrilling films and seven exciting TV now. movies. The success of Shaft has why sparked some debate as it's based on a novel sexy, written by white author Ernest Tideman. Mm-hmm. Shaft really marked a positive change in Hollywood Bundini by Brown. giving more authority to... Yes, you want it. That's, but, that's uh, Mike Homily. He homies uh, Mike Bundini Brown. <laughs> like cast and crew I think it's Brown, but Bundini. So what do you think of our list? Where you supposed- All right, cool. There you have it. Now we want to take a look at that the downside of Black Sports Station film, which is the which are the top the top five worst black sportation films. Consider. Well, let's get it. Mm-hmm. Hey. hey there, groovy cats and cinema buffs. Today we're spinning a reel back to the era of Bell Hold on a second. Hold on a second for a little further than that. I'm back, so yeah, um, little man, hello, that little fussy, um, he, I guess he ain't like being with him, so, trying to find a way to get him out play, he got him out with a little toy out there, so, he's good, so anyway, um, we're gonna continue, this is going, now we look at the downside of black exploitation, we're gonna take a look at five worst black exploitation, it's probably the last video for the day, so anyway, what I thought to do, let's check it out. ...and afros to chat about a genre that's as bold as it is bodacious, 
black exploitation. I got it. But hold on to your popcorn because we're not here to talk about the super fly hits. We're exploring the top five black exploitation films that were well, let's just say they didn't quite hit the mark. Number five, starting out on our list. Blackenstein, mm. a black exploitation take on Mary Shelley's classic yeah. Frankenstein, was an attempt to fuse the horror genre with the then popular style of black exploitation. Released in 1973, the film tells the story of a Vietnam War veteran who, through the experiments of his fiance's mad scientist boss, is transformed into a murderous monster. On paper, the idea might have seemed like a surefire yeah. way to capitalize on the success of Blackula, mm -hmm. another black horror film. However, Blackenstein fell short in almost mm. every conceivable way. The execution was like luster, with makeup and effects that bordered on the comical rather than the horrific, right. and a monster that was more likely to elicit laughs than screams. This monster's makeup job looks like it was slapped mm. on in the dark. It's a film that's monstrously misguided, but irresistibly watchable for those who love a good campy horror movie. Instead of delivering the thrills that fans of both horror and black exploitation saw, Blackenstein became a case study in missed potential, serving mm. up a film that's often remembered for all the wrong reasons. Number four, we have Disco Father. Oh, Picture yeah, this, this. Rudy Ray Moore, the Dolomite Dynamo, diving into the disco scene to save mm. the youth from the perils of drugs. It's as chaotic as a roller disco on a tilt a world. <laughs> You'll come for the disco, stay for the confusion, and leaving wondering what you just watched. Ah! Moore plays a retired cop turned DJ who takes mm. it upon himself to clean up the community after his nephew succumbs to the effects of PCP. Ooh. While the intention to address a real societal issue was commendable, the film's execution left much to be desired. Its disjointed narrative, <laughs> uneven pacing, and often over the top performances rendered a. Yeah, man, my mic just fell off the thing. I'm back, yeah, my mic just came off the, the mic, little felt hook uh, came off the table a rather confusing spectacle. The intended gravita is frequently undercut by unintentional comedic moments and the action sequences are more slapstick than slick. Mm -hmm. Creeping into the third spot, the thing with two heads. Oh yeah, I heard about this. I actually think I saw it one time growing up. It was just, what the fuck? I saw it as it was like a random movie that came on. I saw it, um, I was like, what the hell? Thing with Two Heads is a 1972 black exploitation film that ventures into the realm of science fiction with an outlandish premise. A wealthy, racist white man's head is transplanted onto the body of a black death row inmate. The execution was marred with absurd special effects that veered into the realm of the ridiculous rather than the thought provoking. The slapstick humor and far-fetched storyline meant to drive home a message of unity and understanding instead left audiences bewildered. Its failure to effectively balance its serious undertones with the campy sci-fi elements resulted in the thing with two heads, being remembered as a bad movie, a curious footnote in the black exploitation genre that's watched more for its novelty and unintended humor than for its narrative. At number two, we have Black Gustapo. Whoa. Black Gustapo is a 1975 black exploitation film that stands out for its controversial title and equally contentious plot. Mm, the movie centers around a group of African-American vigilantes who, tired of the exploitation of their community by local mobsters, form a militant group to fight back. However, their initial intentions quickly sour as they begin to mirror the very oppressors they stood against, mm. growing corrupt and violent. While the film sought to explore things of power and corruption, it did so with a heavy hand, often coming across ex exploitative itself with excessive violence and a lack of nuanced storytelling. Black Gustapo ended up as a bad movie, not because of his bold premise, but because it failed to handle his potentially powerful subject matter with the care and critical approach it required. Mm. And now the moment we've all been waiting What's for. The and number one, The Ledger of Nigger Charlie. A title that screams... <laughs> <laughs> the name itself. I don't even have to see the film here he had to say just the time himself done deal yep done deal wow oh my god what the hell all right let's see let's go. all right let me get through this it's a bad idea paired with a plot that i have you cringing harder than a stand-up comic bombing on stage this film is a stark reminder that not all ideas are good ideas especially when they involve problematic portrayals in a story that's all over the map did we nail the list, or did your favorite bad black exploitation film not make the cut? Mm. Let us know in the comments below. If you had as much fun as we did, hit that like button, yeah. subscribe.
Okay, so yeah, that was good. He ain't said much. He ain't said much. That's how bad it was. So anyway, so we took a look at the good and the bad of black exploitation as well too, though. But either way, there was a good amount of good movies that came out there, and it's probably far more worse than the five. Well, not worse, but like not as bad as the five. He said it was probably was like the it have like the the ten ten. It'll be someone that been it'll be someone like I think it'll be on there as well too, like. Not, not certainly, certainly it would be considered bad or just the lower of the top 10 or the, or the, the past of the top, past top 10 would be like the 20s or whatever. But other than that, both, both videos are interesting though. So if, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's your boy T-Bird signing off. One love.